Okay, my last video, uh, we talked a little bit about some of the auxiliary inputs and outputs that are on the back of this uh, Tech 465B that are kind of common on uh, some of the scopes. And a couple of folks had asked me about, uh, you know, how you might use some of those outputs. Um, we talked a little bit about the one that was on the back of this 465, which was a buffered copy of the signal that's applied to channel one, and how you can use that to drive a counter or a uh, maybe use it to drive channel 2 at very low signal levels and get a gain in sensitivity. So there's one more uh, video here uh, using two more of the, the signals that are on the back. Um, this one, if you take a look at, carefully at the trace, you can see kind of a illuminated little dot right here. And what that is is kind of like a marker that I built. I used two, to, two of the uh, ports on the back and a little circuit to kind of do that. And, I twist a little pot here and we can see I can move that marker back and forth on the screen. So it's kind of like uh, you know, being able to put markers or cursors on uh, on your scope. And this is using two of the outputs uh, coming out of the back. And in some sense you could really do it with just one, but um, uh, let's describe what I've got here. So uh, one of the outputs I'm using is the one called A gate. A gate basically is uh, an output that goes high whenever this A sweep, okay, the A time base, the A sweep is sweeping. And then when it's finished sweeping and the signal gets uh, sw you know, retraced back over, then that output goes low. So you've got a, a, a pulse, a long pulse, that's uh, you know, coincident with when this trace is happening. So, uh, so that's kind of an interesting thing and we'll use that here. The other in input that we're the other signal that we're using on the back of the other connection is the Z input. The Z axis input is one that allows you to control the intensity of the display. Okay, and you can kind of see again that I've got a little bit of a, a bright spot right there. And, and what I've done is, with this little circuit, is basically be able to move this dot or delay it so it can actually, and if you put some calibrations on it, you might be able to use it to make timing measurements and things like that. So, so here's how we did it. Um, the circuit is actually right here on my little demo board. Uh, and what we did is uh, you know, built the circuit here. Uh, and it's pretty simple actually. So the A gate, again, that's you know kind of this pulse that uh, is off during the retrace, goes high during the sweep time, and then goes off during the, the retrace, and then returns high again and continues on like that. So what we're going to do is use the fact that, okay, when this rising edge occurs, that's going to be my timing reference for me to create a little bit of a pulse to drive the Z-axis input. The Z-axis input on this thing is kind of inverting. If you put a signal in that's positive, that tends to make the trace get dimmer. So in order to create a bright little dip, I need to create a narrow little pulse like this, okay, uh, over time. Okay, and then wherever that narrow little pulse is, that's what creates the bright uh, blip here on the screen, okay. And what we want to be able to do is position this narrow pulse back and forth in time res with respect to the beginning of the A sweep. So we did it, actually did it pretty simply. Now there's probably even easier ways, certainly even easier ways to do it than what I did here, but um, these are just parts I had on hand. So a uh, uh, simple little NPN transistor, values really are not very critical here. The, the whole idea with the NPN transistor is two things. One is I wanted to, I want to trigger on this rising edge, okay? So what I'm going to do is, but I'm using a 555 to create the, del the adjustable delay, okay? The delay that's occurring, you know, that I can adjust here. Uh, but the trigger input on the 555 is is triggered on something going negative. Okay, so what I did is I used the transistor to invert that signal, and then I'm AC coupling or differentiating that signal so that, you know, now here I'm going to get kind of the wider, the, the pulse, the long gate, and then back up like that. But by differentiating it, what I'm going to do is just get little blips during the rising edge and the falling edge. And that falling edge, okay, the falling edge here is the same as the rising edge there. Okay, that little falling edge is the thing that's going to cause myself to trigger. So that's going to set the beginning of the delay of this uh, 555 that I have set up just as a triggerable monostable, which means that once it gets triggered, it outputs a pulse that's proportional to 1.1 times this RC. That pulse comes out here. Okay, and I can adjust this pot to adjust the width of that pulse. Okay, so now that pulse is going to come down and also being differentiated into the trigger input of a second 555. This one kind of creates just the narrow little blip, okay, that narrow pulse, okay, in response to 
um, the edge of this. So therefore I can adjust the width of this pulse to determine where this little pulse is going to occur and adjust that with respect to essentially the rising edge of this guy right here. Okay. Then I take that output and again I've got to invert it. Okay, so I'm using a simple transistor to invert it and a little bit of resistor scaling to kind of get the values that I want. So that's the circuit. Um, this is what it looks like here on the demo board. I got a bunch of probes on here. So I can show you the waveforms up here on this scope. So okay, so uh, so this waveform at the very top, that's the uh, the A gate signal. Okay, so I can see that's coming from the 465. Okay, so when that comes up, the, this the sweep is starting and then the sweep is ending, re retracing and starting again. This is the output of the transistor, or the the differentiated output from the collector. So it's inverted. Okay. Uh, and then differentiated. So inverted means I'd get the positive pulse here, the negative pulse here, or the negative edge there. But then since I'm differentiated, you know, you can see the little blip there and the little blip coming down. That little negative going blip, okay, and that's occurring right here, okay, is what's going to cause the second, uh, or it's going to cause the, its output to kind of go high. The length of that pulse, or the width of that pulse, is being set by this RC that little pot right there okay and then uh, and then that is going into uh, that and that output that pulse is going in being differentiated here to create a trigger pulse here and its output is going to create a very narrow little pulse okay that comes out over here and that's the tr that's the trace we're looking at down here this is a little blip that I'm sending to the z-axis input and if I go down here and I put my finger on the pot here Okay, and adjust the pot. You can kind of see what happens, right? I adjust, I'm adjusting the width, the width of uh, that third trace from the top. That's the first five, 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 and then you can see that little glitch, that little blip is kind of following the tail end of that. Okay, so that's going to create my adjustable delay of the bright spot. Okay, so that is being coupled right back into the z-axis of the scope, and uh, and let me go over, reach over in the pot here, and adjust this, and I can actually see I can adjust that delay. Okay, so you could actually build up a couple of these, right, with a couple of different delays uh, and actually create multiple dots if you wanted to make some delay measurements. Uh, you could, might be able to put a knob on this guy and calibrate it in time. And uh, again, you got to play with this because, you know, the values here are going to depend on a lot of things, right? I've, this RC gives me a uh, that little negative glitch, that negative little narrow pulse that I'm getting here is only... Oh, 10 or 15 microseconds or so, and that works fine at uh, these time-based settings, but at really fast time-based settings, you'd want even a narrower little pulse. So this one circuit is going to be useful for, you know, kind of a you know, small set of uh, applications, and then you might have to have switches in for adjustable values to, uh, for these things to, uh, to make it more universal. But this is just one example of where, um, you know, you could use like the, the A gate Okay, that we're using here to synchronize this this circuit to what the scope is doing, and make an adjustable thing, you know, to adjust that uh, that marker on the z-axis. So, one area where the z-axis could be used. Another example for that might be, let's say you're uh, you're working on aligning receivers and you want to sweep like, uh, you know, sweep a uh, an IF or a filter. Okay, so you can go like to a sweep oscillator, like one of those guys over there, function generator, sweep generator. Okay and uh, set up a similar circuit to this to create a marker, a blip, that occurs at maybe your desired center frequency for the filter. Okay, and then uh, so you could drive the z-axis with that, okay, and then drive uh, you know the, the scope in XY with say the sweep voltage and then the response through the filter. Okay, so by doing that you can look at essentially at the frequency response of the filter and then maybe move the marker you know across that to make sure you're peaking at a certain spot so that's another way you could use uh, you know the z-axis input for example so uh, you know th I'll tell you in the you know 30 years that I've been an engineer there's only been very few times where I've actually used <laughs> those rear uh, panel connectors um, and uh, one of the times was something similar to this so I thought this would be a fun one to show at least to illustrate one uh, one way of with a fairly simple circuit um, and uh, a couple of simple uh, waveforms here to uh, create kind of a, a movable marker on a scope that doesn't have markers, okay, or you know things like that. 
you know, some of the more advanced uh, scopes like this one here have got uh, cursors that you could bring up and, and move around. But, um, but by using this little technique here, you can kind of create your own version of that uh, without having to buy a more expensive scope. So anyway, I thought uh, that would be fun, and uh, thanks for watching. Comments are always welcome. Thank you.